You ever wonder why Rocky had a robot in Rocky IV randomly? Well, maybe someone saw this? I will verify that Bobby brushes his teeth. I think most of you have heard of the novelist Michael Crichton, famous for the creation of the Jurassic Park universe. He excelled in action-adventure and science fiction stories. His characters would be put in very unusual situations, then would mash two things together and see what happens. That's why we got dinosaurs and frog DNA. Many of his books have been adapted into films with varying success. The Andromeda Strain, Jurassic Park, Lost World, the Malign Congo movie. But you might not know that he also wrote and directed films himself. Crichton always likes taking the cliche or mundane story we've seen a hundred times and try to make a twist on it. Runaway is one of his original movie pieces. Starring big names of the 80s, Tom Selleck as Sergeant Jack Ramsey, Gene Simmons in one of his earliest acting roles, Charles Luther. You got G.W. Bailey playing the ass police chief role as usual, even Kirstie Alley playing Jackie Rogers. Runaway is one of those movies that just had bad luck at the time it came out. What would the world be like if robots were a common thing? Helpers around your house, cooking your food, putting your baby to sleep, watering your crops. Then what happens if these things malfunction? You call the Runaway Squad, a small branch of police that dedicated their time in tracking and shutting down problematic bots. The job is considered mostly boring or stupid to the public, basically janitor work. So Ramsey and Marvin James are the only two that work in the department, tucked away in the corner. The movie takes place in the present time. So while it does have all the fancy robots and stuff, it pretty much still is the 80s. You're not overwhelmed like say how Blade Runner has the universe in the distant future. Crichton wanted you to focus on the people more so than just the backdrop. How would these people work? What would their lives be like? The robot designs go from good to very simple. They're not amazing as say B9 from Lost in Space. They're more industrial. Crichton picked Selleck because he's a familiar name. He's good at action and mystery. Ramsey took this job because he wanted to bury himself in robotics. The only person he really talks to is his squad partner, James. Ramsey is cold. He speaks, gives you an answer, but that's it. He's almost like a robot himself, while James, he's the complete opposite. You could see why he joined the Runaways. He loves tech, he loves taking apart the robot, does all the forensics. I'm amazed that he's able to be in the same room as Ramsey. But the duo became a trio when Thompson joined the squad, so Ramsey has to deal with someone new. You can see he kind of forgot how to speak to people. I really like the three characters. They don't really gel together. Ramsey's trying to be alone. Thompson needs to get to know everything, so he's at odds in what to do. How do I teach her? You could see in one way he's teaching her, but trying to show her that the job is boring. You shouldn't take it. Like he got these two cases, one robot that was cutting a cornfield down randomly. She ran around in the field and shut it off. And another that was dropping cement bags off a 20 story construction building. She loved it. Thompson joined the Runaways because she liked the technical side. That perky nature of her got Ramsey to open up a bit. The reason why Ramsey is so distant. A criminal got away from him who then murdered six people. He sees himself as a danger on top of him having a son who lost a mother. It really hurt him. He has a fear of heights. Ramsey froze in place allowing the guy to escape. It's a touchy subject. Is it really his fault? You can argue it either way. And I also think he picked the boring job so his son doesn't lose a father. His son looks up to him very much. They help each other out. He still loves that he's a cop saving people's lives or property in this case. At the same time, he knows his father's hurting. For Thompson's character, she's naive, but in a good way. She wants to learn, soak up everything she sees. That's why she asks questions and got the truth out of Ramsey, a perfect skill for a cop. Thompson softens him up. He tries to be more open to her, even offering a meal at home where we get to meet Lois, a all-purpose, high-intelligent robot, the only good robot in the film. She watches after Bobby, honestly watches after Ramsey too. She has an interesting personality, kind of like a mother hen, but isn't good at understanding human subtleties. See you tomorrow. Will I see you tomorrow? No, Lois, uh, she was talking to me. The meat of the movie is a string of runaway robots that are going berserk. Something simple as a cooking robot escalated to murder, killing two people, threatening the life of a baby with the father stuck outside. Ramsey had to risk his life to disarm it. It becomes this bigger mystery. 
Movies like to always go on and worrying about banks being hacked, computers being destroyed by viruses, but what if someone created chips and weapons that could turn any robot into an assassin? Ramsey's boring field became the center of a serious problem, all because people took advantage of bots. Charles Luther is the man behind these murders as a way of silencing or getting rid of people that get in his way. These computer chips are not hacks, per se. They're more harder to detect. These mass-produced chips can be slipped into any robot, disabling their safety programs. People would pay billions to get a hold of these chips. Oh, we got a dense back floor! Not to mention, he's designed spider bots that inject acid into the target and blows up, along with a homing bullet that can follow you anywhere. Luther is like Jackal and Hyde, a regular average businessman who's just selling stuff to kill people. But if someone gets in his way, it's just a problem he needs to solve, kills without remorse, no matter how close you are to him. Simmons gives a good performance as his first major acting job. He tries to give Luther some added depth, but with the very little screen time he has, it doesn't come off much. So he ends up being more of a cliche bad guy. Looks, gloats, and gets angry. James identifying the computer chips, how they got in there. It just keeps opening up doors and people involved. Two people who knew Luther stole chips and tried to blackmail him. Ramsey kept running into a dead end, literally, as each one got killed off till he reached Jackie, who was trapped in her office building by a security bot. Jackie was one of the three who thought it was a great idea to blackmail a guy who has a gun that can hunt you down from basically anywhere. Money makes people do really stupid things. Even after the two guys being killed, Jackie being shocked, she still wouldn't tell them the whole truth. I'm clean, I don't know anything. It became this one-up game between Luther and Ramsey. Ramsey has Jackie, Luther's like, okay, I guess I'll blow you up. This is probably the best scene in the film, the car chase. It's not your ordinary car chase. The car is targeted by these mini robotic minds and they have to dodge them like this was a plane fight. Countermeasures, bailing to other cars. I should point out that Jerry Goldsmith wrote the score of the movie. This was his first time in using synth. Synthesizer music has that special otherworldly quality. He uses that to raise the tension. He also can get those same electronic sounds to blend under the quiet moments with Bobby. Ramsey is the only person that got under Luther's skin. Ramsey has Jackie, Luther kidnapped Thompson, they do a trade at a restaurant. Jackie knew she was dead, so she screwed him by giving some of the chips to Ramsey, which made Luther go after his son. Having a final showdown at the construction site. Luther must have read everything about Ramsey and tried to take advantage of his fear. The ending was somewhat okay. It wasn't a full-on fight between the two, so don't expect something like John Wick. It was more of an obstacle course of getting Ramsey to get over his fears. Luther got his comeuppance by his own machines. Spiders that were programmed to kill Ramsey after the elevator returned to the ground level killed him. I think Runaway was an okay original film from Crichton. The characters he created were all fun and interesting. Honestly, the plan was pretty smart. Why wouldn't you take advantage of something like a robot? The only real problems the film had was the lack of character development for James and Thompson. James being only there for exposition. Thompson, while she got stuff to do and held Ramsey as his partner, she didn't get many chances to be side by side since the story forced Ramsey to be alone. The movie feels rushed at times. The editing wasn't that great. You can tell they chopped things out to keep the pace up. So the film has a balance issue of explaining and then transitioning to the next scene. I think what also hurt the film was Selleck himself. Being so familiar from Magnum P.I., people couldn't disconnect him from there to this. Today, that wouldn't matter since most people don't remember the show, so you have a blank slate on the actor, which really helps to focus more on the film. The only reason why the movie really failed was because it came out during the releases of Terminator and Star Trek III. This little movie against the blockbuster hit of Terminator and Spock coming back had no chance. It's a decent, fun flick. It has a lot of similarities to iRobot, so if you like that film, I think you'd like this too. Now, if you wanted a physical copy, Spain and Germany are the only places that released it on Blu-ray. I got the German one. Ignore the Region B marker on the box, it's region free.
Thanks for checking out the video. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. And if you remember a movie or a show that's long been forgotten, good or bad, leave it as a suggestion below. I'm always on the lookout for obscured stuff.